Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new Cinema 40 and After Effects tutorial video. And in this episode, we'll be talking about how to create motion blur in post-production for 3D animation files coming from Cinema 4D into After Effects or how to do it straight in Cinema 4D through some render settings. So the idea with motion blur is that if you're recording something at 30 frames a second with a camera and it's moving quickly, you'd get this blur happening and there's a number of different ways to add that in, be it burned in or in post-production like we're doing here in After Effects to mimic that idea that if something is moving quickly past the camera, it should be blurry. And that's how we're used to seeing stuff with the camera. So if you checked out the last episode of my show where we're talking about putting this animation together with MoGraph in Cinema 4D where it builds in and then explodes, that's what we'll be working from. And if you didn't and you want to check that out, you can check it out at the link in the description. Or if you're working with a different 3D file and you just want to know about how motion blur works and the way to go about it, that's fine too. So the first way we could do this is in Cinema 4D, if this is moving quickly and we want that motion blur, by default, we're not going to get it. However, if we go into our render settings on the physical renderer in the full studio version of Cinema 4D, if you check on motion blur and let's do a quick render of just this frame, we can see that that's going to turn on and we're going to get that blur. However, you can see by the default settings, it doesn't come out that great. So if you wanted higher quality motion blur burned into Cinema 4D, you could go to physical and change the sampling quality. So we could tweak these settings a lot. Or if we just turned it up from low to medium to high and render, you can see that the quality is a lot better from low to high with this. However, it's a little extreme. And if we do it this way, we have the problem is if we want to have this rendered out and be able to adjust that later, we'd have to go back and re-render the whole animation. So there's some other routes in post-production we can do in After Effects to create this with Cinema 4D files or rendered videos from 3D animation to create this motion blur in post. That can be a really good solution. And I really recommend going the post-production route for motion blur rather than burning it into your 3D animation files. And it's always a good option to add that blur in post so you don't have to go back and re-render the whole thing if you want to take it out. So what we can do is you could just render it, this whole thing by doing output all frames and shift R to let it go. And that's fine. And when it's done, just save this animation as a quick time. But what we could do in After Effects now is if we want to add this is just hop into After Effects. And we already got this little one I was doing. But what we can do is just bring that Cinema 4D file straight in here. So I'll just grab that Cinema 4D file and we don't even need to pre-render it out. And if we're not doing a crazy complicated animation, we don't even need to pre-render it. If we're just adding stuff like this, we can bring that C4D file in straight, drag it to new composition in After Effects. And there's our file. Boom. It's all there. Didn't even need to render it yet. And what this Cineware plugin is doing is bringing that in, allowing us to pull stuff out of it, view it. And if you're really into this sort of stuff, I have a bunch of other tutorials I'll link to that go over a lot of this sort of stuff. And with Cineware, I can go to standard final and that's going to be my file, but we got a problem. We're not getting our background and we could make a solid in after effects, but tip number a hundred found this out the hard way of having to Google it. The way that this is bringing this in is with an alpha channel that ignores backgrounds and stuff, but we have one. So if we want to fix that rather than a solid, this is the solution. If we go to interpret footage main on the C4D file, here's where it's making that mat super specific to this sort of stuff. And it'll drive you crazy. If you don't know why you can go to ignore, it's not going to key this out. And then we get our background that's in there. We don't got to worry about adding it in after effects. Now, like I said, it's cool to do this in post. If you're doing blurs as an option, and there's a couple ways to do it. The built-in way is if we go to effects and go pixel motion blur, this is a great way built into after effects to do this. It's going to add that post production blur. You can see it takes a bit to render, which is one problem we're going to talk about in 30 seconds, probably. And it adds that blur, but it looks kind of weird and it's getting a little off. And that might just be because it's a cinema 4d file. It worked a little better when I just rendered the whole thing out as a video here. So we can see this is how this pixel motion blur is on the whole quick time video rendered out. So maybe that's the reason to do it. But there's also this other little plugin that I like called really smart motion blur or RSMB. It's a paid plugin, but it's super useful for this sort of stuff. And you can see it went a little quicker and it gets a little more accurate. So again, you could do this on the cinema 40 file or 
If you wanna pre-render it out like I did over here as a QuickTime, render it out as a QuickTime, then bring it in and check out Pixel Motion Blur built in After Effects or really smart motion blur, which is by Revision Effects as just an option. It's a good one to have. I use it a lot for this sort of 3D stuff. So I hope you learned a lot. This is a really fun episode to put together. And as always, you could check out some of my other tutorials on YouTube covering all sorts of stuff like Cinema 4D, After Effects, motion graphics, dynamics, and all sorts of cool things like that. As well as don't forget to subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella, as well as hit me up on Twitter at, at Sean Frangella if you have any questions, requests for tutorials, and want to interact that way. And check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Vital, or just search for that. It's under SJ Animate right now, but the URL is not over. Maybe it is in the future. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you learned a lot about blowing up brick walls and stack them in place or the opposite of that. I'll see you next time. So I hope you learned a lot. This was a really fun episode to put together. And as always, you could check out some of my other tutorials on YouTube covering all sorts of stuff like Cinema 4D, After Effects, motion graphics, dynamics, and all sorts of cool things like that. As well as don't forget to subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. As well as hit me up on Twitter at, at Sean Frangella if you have any questions, requests for tutorials, and want to interact that way. And check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Vital, or just search for that. It's under SJ Animate right now, but the URL is not over. Maybe it is in the future. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you learned a lot. I'll see you next time.